former NYPD lieutenant commander and homicide detective Vern Gebreth, former prosecutors, current defense attorneys Jeffrey Gold and Joey Jackson join us. And you're going to be surprised to see two additional attorneys at this table, uh, the defense team in the uh, Drew Peterson case. I'm going to start with you guys here. Now, uh, Vern. You wrote the book, Practical Homicide Investigation, and I got to get this out of the way. You're in the fourth edition of your book. It's a Bible for homicide detectives. They recognize best Does practice. this investigation stink? Oh, absolutely. I, I wish that I was the first responder. Why? Well, because from the get-go, they went in there with a preconceived notion that it was an accidental death. And I personally believe, based on my conversations with folks in the Illinois State Police as well as others, that the lead investigator was not qualified to conduct an investigation. You think? He never did a homicide investigation. Well, it goes beyond that. You know, some, some wizard in the Illinois State Police decided to take road cops and promotion, like a social promotion, and put them into places they didn't belong. You have to be qualified to conduct a homicide investigation. This guy was not. All and right. as far as the crime scene person, who is, who is he to make a determination as to the cause of death or manner of death? And, and to call it an accident and tell him, don't, do not collect any evidence. Well, I would say this. I would say any investigator with the least modicum of common sense would have seen that as a suspicious death. Yeah, Jeff, common you've sense, been in the courtroom. Common sense, nothing. It was a cop. They were investigating a cop. It was as if they went to a, a, a stop somebody for speeding and he flashed a badge and they let him go, but it was a homicide. And they treated it like a speeding, professional I, courtesy, and I, they let the thing go. It there's was, no professional courtesy for homicide. If I had a uh, cop... You ain't son, kidding about that. <laughs> I, I wish I was the okay. first responder. And, these, and, these, and this Illinois investigator may do a lot of bodies dropped off on 55 coming out of uh, Chicago, but he didn't do a lot of these. This was ridiculous. It's a well-stated point, Jeff, but ultimately what has to happen is jurors need evidence and and if they can't produce the evidence because it's not there because police didn't do their job then what yeah you need yeah, physical but, but, evidence but, but, but isn't that the point it that is they didn't do their job and they were giving the the homicide away yes but now that the prosecution's trying to backtrack to show how in but they, they were the body so doesn't that tell us what happened I, there was still tissue right. on her body deep bruising down to the yes. bone judge but, i think if you look at bloom and his testimony i think it's powerful and effective but remember, he had to make certain admissions. Like what? Like the person who's deceased, who ultimately did it, is a very respected pathologist who happened to have opinions that differed but from Joey, his own. But, Joey, I'm going to tell you something you didn't know because you weren't in the courtroom. That pathologist never saw the picture that I saw in the courtroom. That's tough. He's doing the That's autopsy tough. without seeing her feet in a 90-degree angle up against the, uh, the wall. She's squeezed in. She's like a sardine. Worse than a sardine. I had sardines the other day. They're lined up straight. All right? What do you want to say, you defense? attorneys oh my god well the, you know when you come to the position of the toes that doesn't mean anything because when you when the body settles, and that's what our pathologists say as the body settles and rigor sets in that's why the toes got in that way and that tub is not that small evidence is from uh, uh, Kathy's that's boyfriend hogwash uh, rigor her... sets in her arms and legs go straight no, the, but the muscles expand the Judge. muscles expand. That's why they go straight. And then when the rigor goes out of her butt, then the way, body stayed in the same place. Why is her hair dry? All right. If she her was in dry, was, her, 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 no, they said her hair was dry and there was blood in her hair. No, it was, no, it was, it was damp. damp. It, it was damp. damp. Her hair was God, damp. That's and not she what I mean. One doctor, thing, Judge. One second, Doctor Bloom. Ahead, doctor Bloom was a, a very good witness yeah, for the was. state. You guys will agree. I don't think the defense did a great job on that. That was a good state's day, but they haven't had many days. It's almost impossible for you guys to lose this case. Is there's nothing to connect Drew Peterson to the homicide? So as much. As, about behavior. There's Hold nothing on. to connect but, them there. But, but, but Jeff, that's, no not, that's not outcome determinative for the following how many, reason. How many witnesses have you excluded? Over ten. Yeah. So, and you know, and so that's why we're not having a search for truth because there are no witnesses that's being allowed to, have to testify. No, no, no. Because no, we're we're talk about okay, behavior. okay, hang Let's, on. Whoa, 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 I love, no fight. No fight. Here's the thing. It's not a search for the truth because if it were, you guys would would, would put those people on the stand. But they're hearsay beat them witnesses. Up. But they're hearsay witnesses. It's not a crap. Oh. And you know what? There's something called forfeiture by wrongdoing, which right. is why hearsay is admissible. Let me tell this. But why is hearsay? Okay, go. The reason hearsay is admissible is because if you 
commit a crime that prevents someone from testifying, you cannot benefit by having done something wrong. For example, if you stop Kathleen Savio from testifying at the divorce settlement, you can't say now everything she said doesn't come in because of your wrongdoing it comes in. And if you stop Stacey Peterson from testifying that Drew said X, Y, and Z by murdering her, then that comes in too. Well stated, Judge, and Thank that's you. why it comes down to interpretation. If the jury, even though, Jeff, the physical evidence is lacking, if the jury believes some of the circumstantial evidence and it mounts and it mounts and it mounts, it could be compelling enough for conviction. What I want to wait and see is what the defense has lined up in terms of the experts because it'll come down to what do you got, a guys? battle. We have, we have three experts who are going to testify that this, in their eminent opinion, was an accident. It all always of, was. All but three none of them. of them did an autopsy. Well, they, they, we couldn't re-exhume the body. He wasn't charged until two years but later. All... But Dr. Bloom said that he reviewed their work and their work was good and it's just a matter of opinion and great minds can disagree and that's what it's going to come down to. Guys, what do you think of the fact that the jury's dressing like the low pie? Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what to make. I really don't know what to make of that. I think that this case is home free for Drew Peterson, except for one thing: that there could be a hung jury, and he'll still sit in jail unless one thing happens, and that's unless Drew Peterson decides to not listen to you and a thousand other lawyers and get up and testify. If he doesn't, he'll win his case, but he'll be a pariah, or he'll sit in jail on a hung jury until the next one. The only way that he will walk a truly free man is if he actually looks that jury in the eye, those that are wearing the same colors, and testifies. He's trying to bait him. But he is bait. Bait. I thought I'm Ralph telling you something. Peter, OJ, get on the stand and admit what you did. O.J. is locked up now. He will never truly be a free man unless but he looks karma. that jury no, in the yeah, eye. But that's karma. That, yeah, exactly. That is he, karma. he got away with it, Go ahead, Jeff. Let's talk about behavior. Let's, let's, let's get back to behavior, all right? We wouldn't be having this discussion right now if Drew Peterson didn't put himself in that position by the way he behaved. Psychopathic personality, malignant narcissism, taking pictures of the news media, smiling, making jokes when his wife is missing, carry on the way he did, caused the authorities to go back and look at Kathleen Savio. And when they dug her up and they exhumed the body and they found it was a homicide, now they're back to what do we do? Well, that on top of the addition of his next wife being missing. I mean, you know, yes. when the fourth wife well, goes yes, missing, he was obviously. So sure and, and what that would the jury... Stacey would never be found. That he put that act on. Stacy will never be found. No, she won't. He I had the cops baffled. You know, this guy is a bully. He, he's the kind of person in, in police departments, and I've seen him. I've seen a lot of people in police departments that come into a police department and they use their position in a manner that is obviously not professional, but more importantly, to their advantage. And he used his position to his advantage. And your client is his worst enemy, I'll tell you right now, because anybody who watched him on national television said, Drew Peterson did it. I, I don't disagree with it that. I'm glad you're not on the jury. Okay. <laughs> you ought to be glad I didn't here's, come to the here's scene. Here's the bottom line. <laughs> um, if, if the truth is that this was a homicide and not an accident, mm -hmm. are you going to argue in closing statement that if it is a homicide, that someone other than Drew did it? Well, we're never going to give up that this was an, um, this was an accident. This is clearly was an accident. The death certificate still reads the accident as, as a couple months ago. Are you going to point to someone else as possibly doing something to Kathleen in your closing uh, you'd, statement? You'd have to ask Joe Lopez. Joe Lopez doing the closing. <laughs> All right, we'll have him on. We'll the have the, yeah, him and his wife, and they'll dress alike. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, we can bring Ralph Metchik on because I think Ralph did a great job in that cross examination. Okay, that's a defense attorney who cross examined Blum. A blue. Huh. Whoa, you were in the courtroom. He's I'll tell you, Ralph is a sweet guy, and I like him, but, but it, it brought gasps to the jury. In fact, Joel had a, at some point asked the judge later, oh, we'll make Keep sure nobody gallery. gasps. But the jury gasped when he asked a question to this eminently qualified uh, county medical examiner who'd done a very respectable job in that courtroom and seemed to answer every question. And at a certain point he said, so that's your lame excuse for, and the jury gasped because of the yeah. disrespect you shown know what, for him. Guys, but Ralph's a good guy. Jury, well, Ralph, yeah, but Ralph, jury was, Ralph like was smart him. enough to be able to get in on their case, and the uh, fact that we had three ex Experts. He got that in on their case. Let I me mean, ask that's, you this. That, was, that was genius. Why isn't Ralph here and, and, and all you well, guys are on the media all the time? Ralph, Ralph says all... it's not ethical to do. Well, I you don't know about that. Well, are on TV hey, well, every guys, day, guys, twice guys, a day. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, that's everybody not relax. True at okay, all. she makes Jeff, guys. that is not true. You know what the rules are. You might have talked about that. I need a gap. Water in the car. All right, gentlemen, don't you agree that this jury is being prevented? from hearing all of the truth. They're being prevented no. from hearing inadmissible evidence. And inadmissible evidence is inadmissible because it's not reliable. 
They are hearing what's, admit, what's been filtered through the system to present to a jury which is only reliable evidence. That's what the rules of evidence, you know this, that's what the rules of evidence are all for, to filter out the unreliable and make sure that the jury only convicts or acquits based upon reliable evidence. Judge, right. how did you, you sustain objections? How did, uh, of course I did. So how, because, how did, but I'm not saying how I ruled on them or what I did. How do you guys explain the bilateral uh, contusions the, in the ch under the clavicle? They were under. Uh, they, they, those are, there was not the skin. They go right to the bone. Those are, the only, the only thing that was on the bone was the hip injury, but you're talking about the, the clavicle. Those were uh, artifacts from the autopsy because they were not on the skin. They Underneath. Yeah, because she died right after that happened. You know what I think it is? I think he forced her head in the toilet, and it was the rim of the toilet under the collarbone that gave that bruising. He forced her down so hard. It's the ultimate degradation. That's the theory. But anyway, gentlemen, wow. we'll see you all in Chicago next week. Uh, thank you, well, Jeff. Yeah, we'll and I'll tell you not to wink Joel, and tell your client that, right? <laughs> and Steve Greenberg. Thanks, guys, for thank a you. lively discussion.